Hey, welcome to Class Act Media. I'm Jack, and, uh, wow. <laughs> okay, I, I see what the people want, and I'm happy to provide what the people want. So, um, you may remember from some of my other reading my awful childhood comics videos, um, I said that I lost the stories. Like, there are some comics I just couldn't find. Well, folks, I'm happy to report I found all of them. All of the missing stories from previous uh, Wonder Boy reading my awful comics episodes have been found, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's just jump into it. Our first comic is uh, Perchance to Dream Part 1, and uh, I believe I covered Part 2 in my in the first reading my awful com childhood comics video, but uh, today we're going we're gonna, to... We, we did the ending there first, now we're going to do the beginning. So let's go. So our comic begins, a lone scientist works in his lab when a visitor comes. His, his mysterious attacker, he sprays him with a mysterious gas. And uh, this would, a good writer, a good comic writer and artist would have kept this, his mysterious ta attacker in the shadows to build up an air of mystery. But no, we just get to see his face. And uh, such should be the fate of all those who interfere with the dreams of the Sandman. Later, Wonder Boy is talking to a cop. Like, what happened here? One cop is there to investigate a guy sleeping. And also Wonder Boy's there for some reason. And he keeps saying something over and over. Somni. Wonder Boy, because he, he knows he's heard the name Somni before. And he, re he realizes it's Edgar Somni, an old uh, assistant of Dr. Mitchell. Apparently, yes, Wonder Boy, I remember in my, when I was reviewing Wonder Boy number six, The Mask, uh, Wonder Boy had previously established had had a previously established relationship with Dr. Mitchell, and I was confused by that, but apparently that's introduced here, even though we still never actually see him interact with Dr. Mitchell. He just says that he knows him, and he has a history with him. So he looks up Edgar Somney. He finds his address. So they go to his, his house, and of course he's there. Of course Edgar Somney is just at his house, after committing a crime in full Sandman getup, complete with the the uh, his gas weapon, his dream weapon. Of course, he's just standing there in the dark, waiting for someone to come find him because his evil plan kind of stopped <laughs> at attacking Doctor Mitchell. Now he's just winging it. Wonder Boy says, "What did you do to Doctor Mitchell, Somni?" And he's like, to explain my actions, allow me to explain a bit about my past. So yes, he basically just says, time for my evil backstory. You will stand there and listen while I explain myself to you. So he explains that he used, yes, he used to be Dr. Mitchell's assistant, and he's obsessed with dreams. So he did a lot of experiments involving dreams, first on like lab mice and lab rats, but when, it, uh, when his experiments moved on to people, that's when Dr. Mitchell decided he was, he'd gone too far and he fired him. I don't know what kind of experiments he's doing. He just kind of hooked people up to this uh, computer thing. The, mo the mouse is showing like a diagram of its brain and the person showing like a graph. A graph of what? How much they're dreaming? How much this guy is dreaming? Uh how bad his dream is. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what he's measuring. It's science things. You don't have to explain science things because no one understands science things. So as revenge for firing him, uh, Somni put him into one of the dreams he called insane. And Wonder Boy says, is there an antidote, scumwad? That's a good insult, scumwad. We need to start pe calling people scumwad again. I'd also like to point out, um, Robodog's helmet is getting progressively rounder as this issue goes on. Like, when we first see him here, his helmet is, like, is very square. But by the, by the last page, like, by the last time we see him, it's, it's decidedly more round. 
So I guess I had not settled on a design for his helmet yet. Sandman says, yes, of course, there's an antidote. I have to take it every day so I don't get affected by my own dream gas. And he's like, you, however, do not. And Wonder Boy says, you wouldn't. Like, he would. You don't know this guy. You just met him. He just explained his evil backstory to you. He's obsessed with dreams. Oh, he would. He would do that. Why do? You, why would you ever suspect he... Why are you even surprised that he would? And so our comic ends with uh, Sandman putting Wonder Boy into a dream. Wonder Boy and Robodog into a dream. And uh, if you want to know the epic conclusion to this, uh, go find part one, part, uh, reading my awful childhood comic, the first video. And here we have, next up, Break a Few Eggs, part two. I went over this, the first part, in uh, reading my awful, reading more of my awful childhood comics video. And uh, so just to recap, um, a new villain known as the Eggman shows up. And uh, he's from an old TV show. He's an actor from an old TV show. And uh, he is committing crimes based on the crimes his character committed in the old TV show. And uh, when we last left him, Wonder Boy had uh, tracked him down to his evil lair in a chemical plant. And he had dropped a grenade into a vat of chemicals. So what's Wonder Boy going to do to get out of this? Well, he just grabs him and flies away. That's all he does. That's his plan. <laughs> he grabs him and flies away, and it, it works. Chemical plant blows up. Eggman says, you can't save me. You're going down with me. I can't kill a superhero by myself. The only way to do it is to go down with the ship. So, I guess he's willing... Eggman, I guess, he wants to die. He's willing to sacrifice himself so criminals everywhere don't have to live in fear of Wonder Boy anymore. You know, that, that's very selfless of him. I, his plan is stupid, but it's still, it's very selfless of him. He's, he's one of the good criminals. He's one of the good, the good super villains. And uh, so he punches Wonder Boy in the face, and I guess that knocks him out. One punch to the face from this stick figure. That's, I, that's another thing. I don't know how his costume works. He's just a living stick figure, I guess. It's, it's, it's a really tight-fitting costume. So, yeah, one punch in the face from Eggman is enough to knock Wonder Boy out and drops him from the sky. But luckily, Robodog... What is this? What is this thing Robodog has unleashed from his mouth? It, it's, it's got a hook and a hand. a hand. The hand grabs Wonder Boy, and then there's just an added hook there to catch Eggman. It's the most oddly specific like, tool Robodog has ever used. Like, he's used a lot of weird stuff coming out of his mouth, but that's the most oddly specific thing he's ever done. And we, we just smash cut to Eggman and Wonder Boy on the ground, and Eggman's throwing a temper tantrum. He's like, no, no, no! I wanted to die! <laughs> and Wonder Boy's like, oh, yes! And he's like, well, you're not taking me to prison. He drops a smoke grenade. And that's enough to get away from Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy's a very ineffectual superhero. Like, if, if you do the slightest amount of work to get away from him, one punch knocks him out, one smoke grenade is enough to escape him. It's very easy to get a one-up on Wonder Boy. He, he may seem unbeatable because he's taken down all his previous opponents, but as Eggman proves here, it's not difficult to beat Wonder Boy. Uh, Eggman escapes, but he leaves behind the egg he stole, in, the jewel-encrusted egg he stole in Part 1 with a note that says, Dear Wonder Boy, here's a little something to remember me by. Peter Welch, a.k.a. Eggman. I like his little sign-off. Like, just in case you forgot my name. This, this is my real name. <laughs> my, my address. My social security number. <laughs> and one of them says, I'll catch you next time. And that's the end of the story. It's not a very good story. I would say this is probably the worst Wonder Boy story. Actually, it would be the worst Wonder Boy story if it weren't for our next story, Animal Paradise. <laughs> I covered part two of this, like this is part one, I covered part two of Animal Paradise in, uh, it was the second one, reading more of my awful childhood comics. So again, 
Check that out if you want to see how this story concludes. But you probably this is the third video in the series. You better be watching them in order. I know, I know if you haven't. I know you. I know if you have not been. I can see you. Uh, our story begins in Donkerberg City Zoo. A guard finishes up his night shift. Um, I'm glad I'm almost done. This place gives me the creeps. His outfit says police. He's wearing the same uniform as all the police do in this city. So I guess the guards, the police are assigned as guards to watch the zoo. I don't know why they would do that. I guess the police, there's just so little crime in this city. The police have nothing to do. They're like, hey, does the zoo need protection? Let's send out one of our guys to watch the zoo at night. But he's, uh, he's attacked by, he, he's kept in shadow, but I wonder who it could possibly be. Which of Wonder Boy's already established enemies could this, possi could this shadowy figure possibly be? He says, now to begin my ultimate dream. I love this one. And the next day, a news report. Uh, Donkerberg City Zoo is closed today for unknown reasons. On a seemingly related note, species of tropical reptiles have appeared in places such as the bank. Lot to unpack here. <laughs> First of all, th that's news apparently if the zoo is closed for unknown reasons. Secondly, on a seemingly related note, the bank is overrun by reptiles. Yeah, that's probably related. The zoo officials probably know their own reptiles. They could probably come in here and confirm, yep, those are ours. We'd like them back, please. Th third of all, the bank. <laughs> like, this is, is, I had a Neil Breen level of understanding how the world works. I resigned today as president of the bank. You know, the one bank every city has. So, Wonder Boy, uh, astute detective that he is, says, Isn't that strange? The zoo's closed and the bank's overrun with reptiles. That, the world's greatest detective, everyone. Move over, Batman. Move over, Sherlock Holmes. Wonder Boy's the best detective of all time. So he pulls up a list of suspects on his laptop, and I think this is just because I wanted to show the extensive rogues gallery that Wonder Boy had been building up. Uh, finally, he, la he lands on Slithero as the prime suspect. And apparently Slithero Slithero's real name is Jamba? Why does he need an alias? He's a snake. His name can just be Slithero. But I think he's still an Alcatraz. Why don't we go pay him a visit? So Wonder Boy and Robodog go to visit Slithero in prison. But as it turns out, the, the, what's, what's in his cell actually turns out to be a shed skin. Wonder Boy says, snake skin, of course, I should have known. He shed and fled. Now I gotta give myself this. That's clever wordplay. But on the other hand, that doesn't explain how he got out. He just shed his skin. He left a decoy. But that doesn't explain how he got out of prison. It just explains how no one noticed that he got out of prison. So they, Wonder Boy and Robodog go to the zoo, which really should have been the thing they did first. Why did, why did they spend the time confirming it was Slithero before going to the place where the animals were coming from, you know? They probably could have figured out who it was without having to confirm that Slithero had escaped. You know what I mean? I'm not a good writer. I mean, I hope I've gotten better. Read Dark Phantom coming DVD. <laughs> Slithero over the intercom says, Well, you are right, Blue Blur. Yes, I wanted to give Wonder Boy his own like tagline, like, you know, Batman's the Dark Knight, Superman's the Man of Steel. I wanted to give Wonder Boy something like that, and I settled on Blue Blur. I'm pretty sure I already knew that Sonic had taken that name. I just didn't care. I'm a filthy plagiarist. <laughs> Wonder Boy gets surrounded by uh, Slithero's tiger henchman, who so that he establishes that he has given him the same, given them the same uh, serum that turned made him intelligent. So his tiger henchman somehow managed to tie up Wonder Boy and Robo Dog. I don't know how they did that because they're just tigers. 
They don't have opposable thumbs. They can't tie a rope. But somehow they ended up... Again, Wonder Boy's a very ineffectual superhero. Even if you don't have opposable thumbs, you can still tie him up. So Slithero introduces Wonder Boy and Robodog to his right-hand man, Gator, who's an alligator who walks on his hind legs. So Slithero leaves Gator to watch Wonder Boy and Robodog while he begins the countdown for his grand design, which is he's going to spread his serum across the city, affect all of the animals, and make them rise up against humanity. Which, you know, not the worst plan. It's a pretty standard villain plan, but it's not the worst idea in this comic. (laughs) So Slithero begins the countdown. And Wonder Boy says, are you really going to help in Slithero's mad scheme? And Gator, of course, humans are all the same. And so Wonder Boy's trying to reason with Gator, which, you know, is a smart idea. But you'll see in the execution, it does not work. Um, Why? Because you were put in a cage? Because that's what Slithero wants to do to mankind. I thought the plan was to make you better than humans. This makes you equal to them. And Gator... That's enough. That is enough to completely change Gator's mind. Like, he does a complete heel turn because Wonder Boy said a couple sentences to him. And he rips him free from the pole and offers to help him stop Slithero's scheme. This is the best redemption arc in all of comics. (laughs) We have no time to lose. Gator, I need to know. Can I trust you? Um, you kind of have to. Yeah, I guess I do. No, you don't. You don't have to trust him. You could easily run in there, punch Slithero in the face, and stop the countdown yourself. He's, you don't need to trust him. But the story is concluded nonsensically um, in Animal Paradise Part 2, which I cover in reading more of my awful childhood comics. And I have one last treat for you all. Um, it's not a Wonder Boy comic, but Wonder Boy is in it. This is The Night Watchman, number one, The Team Assembles. Basically, this is my... I had a lot more superhero characters. I still have a lot more superhero characters than Wonder Boy. And uh, this was going to be my Justice League, my Avengers. You know, this is the big team up of all of them. So, let's just dig in. So our story begins, no establishing shot, no opening narration, not even something to tell us where we are, not even a little editorial blurb to tell us where we are. It just starts right in the middle of the story. A group of villains is uh, in a room being talked to by a shadowy figure who says, hello, fellow super criminals. I have called the greatest in our profession together. Profession is spelled wrong. I just want to clarify right now. I spelled profession wrong. (laughs) There's a few uh, spelling errors in this comic, I believe. This comic specifically. Out of nowhere, because, again, these comics, they come in, like, bulk, and you can't change the uh, layout of the panels. So you kind of have to work with what you get, and since the second panel in every comic is a big whoa kind of shape. I had to make a big whoa kind of moment in the second panel of every one of my comics. And so in this one, I chose another villain named Jurassic Parker barging in, the smashing through the wall. Be like, yeah. And the shadowy figure is like, oh yeah, Jurassic Parker. I forgot I invited you. <laughs> oh yeah, he's here. Oh boy. So he lists off the names of all of his supervillains he's assembled. Dr. Monkey, who he's the only one we've met so far. He's appeared in Wonder Boy comics before. The Leprechaun, Desmond Elroy, Tech 2.0, Crypto, and of course, our our friend Jurassic Parker. Um, The six of you are the trial run for my team of chaos. Together, we will take over the world. What's in it for us? What's in it for us? He just said what's in it for you. We're going to take over the world. Are you not paying attention? And he basically reiterates, yes, we're going to take over the world. That's what's in it for for you. And Tech 2.0 says, that's good for me. Where do I sign? And apparently he has contracts. <laughs> like, 
when he says, where do I sign? I, this shadowy figure took it literally. Like, you will sign a contract with me. Is there like a non-compete clause? You won't you won't join any other supervillain teams as long as you're part of the Dominators. <laughs> they, they're all signing. And outside is fitting the Dark Phantom saying, hmm, I may need some help. And, uh... If you watched my announcement video or follow me on Twitter, you'll know that Dark Phantom has a very different design these days than this mask and robe. But he still has the hat. He's still got the hat. I love the hat. So we cut to Donkerberg, spelled differently than usual. And there's supposed to be an H, I believe, between the A and the N. But uh, Wonder Boy and Mega Girl, who also has not been established in the Wonder Boy comics... But uh, she's his. She's another one of the Wonder Boy family. She has no powers. She's his classmate, Sally McLean, who I believe was was introduced in School of Hard Knocks. That's what the story was called. But we really didn't see much of her in the story, and she certainly never became Mega Girl. But she, she's Mega Girl here, and they're tracking down Sandman. But a uh, message comes in from Dark Phantom. Saying, Wonder Boy, Mega Girl, I need you here. Drop everything and come to New York. Like, what? But Sandman is loose. And Dark Phantom says, let Gator handle it. I need you in New York. Yes, let Gator handle it. The, the former supervillain who reformed for no reason that you blindly trust now. Let him handle the dangerous mad scientist. And so we cut to Chicago, where another one of my teams, the Furious Five, is standing around, uh, also receiving a call from the Dark Phantom. And, <laughs> okay, so most of their designs remain, I mean, they're, I've changed, I've tweaked them, obviously, but most of these designs remain the same. I think I, at least, I, think I actually have a recent-ish drawing I've made of the Furious Five. But what, what is brain wearing? What is the brain wearing? What is this dome? This giant dome over her head? Like, I've, I've, she still has that on her costume, but I've significantly reduced the tallness of that ridiculous hat. What was I thinking? How does that poor woman get through doors? <laughs> and uh, we cut to Los Angeles, where another one of my super, superheroes, Tech, and uh, yes, if yeah, an astute mind might realize, Tech 2.0 is an enemy of Tech. <laughs> and he says, New York, of course. So we cut to all of them. Apparently, Wonder Boy's in Ohio. The Furious Five are in Illinois. Tech is in California. They're all taking the same route to Calif to New York, apparently. And uh, so they're all meeting up at the same time, which should not be possible given they're all of their relative distances from New York, but whatever. Captain Quick says, any idea why Danny Phantom called this meeting WB? Get it? Danny Phantom. Like Dark Phantom. Captain Quick's cool. He's making references. And Wonder Boy says, Wonder Boy's design has changed in between panels. Like, look, his eyes are different. His ma The p position of the W on his mask is different. Speaking of design changes... The brain's helmet is has shrank. I fixed it. I fixed that horrible design. <laughs> Captain Quick introduces himself as Captain Quick, Captain of the Furious Five. And his friend Lightning Joe says, No, you're not. Shut up, Joe. I'm the only one with Captain in their name in the Five. That's cute. I like that. He's, he's, got, he's called Captain. He, he wants to call himself the Captain of the Furious Five. I like that. It's cute. Let's see what Dark Phantom has for us. And you can see the warehouse they're walking into says Lancaster Enterprises. I'm pretty sure Enterprises is spelled wrong on this. Like, th there's an I where there should be an E. Who knows, though? Maybe I spelled it right before and I've gotten worse at spelling as I age. But I'm pretty sure it's spelled wrong. <laughs> so they walk into the warehouse and he says, This is it? I was expecting more from a multi-millionaire. But some mysterious scan sequence initiates and starts naming all of them. Wonder Boy, Mega Girl, Robo Dog, Lightning Joe, Captain Quick, Brain, Invisilady. Her name has changed. I think I call her Lady Light now. Invisilady is a terrible name. Don't. It's, a t it's, it's bad. Um, Elastic Man and Tech all cleared her entrance. Elevator going down. 
And so that our I stopped. I didn't even finish coloring this panel. Destination reached. Welcome, Night Watchman. And that's the story. I never finished this comic. I didn't even fin- I stopped mid-panel. And that's it. That's all the comics I have ever written, or ever completed anyway, uh, involving Wonder Boy. And look, these characters, I still have plans for them. Obviously, you've seen I'm working on something involving Dark Phantom, but I've got plans for all of them. I want to bring Wonder Boy back. I want to bring the Furious Five back. I want to bring Tech back. All of these guys I'm going to bring back in some form or another in the future. Dark Phantom's kind of the starting point for all of this. So... Follow me on Twitter at ClassAct underscore media if you want updates on all of that. And uh, these reading my old comic videos do really well, but this is all of the Wonder Boy comics I have. I wrote more. You'll see. I have plans to continue this series if it keeps doing well. But uh, until then, I'll see you next time, guys.